I'm uh, back with Dr. Dave Williams, the CEO of South Lake Regional Healthcare. And before the break, we started to really sort of talk about the importance of internal uh, customer service, for lack of a better term. And I think we've agreed that that's probably not the right word. But how do you make sure that the team is working well internally so that, that collectively they can provide shockingly excellent service to the external customer, which is your patients? I think it's really critical for senior team members to be interacting on a daily basis with team members at all levels of the organization and to try and ask ourselves the, the question whether or not our team members are satisfied working in the organization, looking at team member satisfaction. So at South Lake, where we strive to deliver shockingly excellent innovative care. If you look at our team members, our volunteer satisfaction score, 96 percent. Physician satisfaction score, 76 percent compared to the provincial average, which is in the mid-50s. Mm -hmm. Our other hospital team member satisfaction score, 69.2 uh, percent, again compared to provincial average measured in the mid-50s. So our team is generally happy. We're trying through the physician staff satisfaction survey to figure out ways in which we can continually improve the environment they're working in. But we want to create an environment where people are empowered to deliver state-of-the-art care because we're giving them the tools they need to do their job and remove all the other distractions to enable them to work and interact with the patients and their families. And you're kind of in a, a, I think, a little bit of an unusual situation is, is that, as I understand, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that the doctors are not actually employees of the hospital. They're actually contracts mm -hmm. with the hospitals. And I don't think a lot of people in the public understand that. They just assume that the doctor works for the hospital. How does that change the dynamic of the relationship? Because I think that's interesting. You know, I think uh, in leadership we talk about positional influence. So you know, there's always the org chart, this yeah. huge pyramid. And yeah. I guess when you're CEO, you're in the little box at the top. So one can use that positional influence to basically tell people what to do. I can try and direct someone to wash their hands, for instance, in the clinical environment. But what I've found is positional influence is very limited in its scope and de generally is not sustainable. As soon as the leader leaves the organization, right. behavior reverts to the previous pattern. So it's really more about personal influence influence, values-based influence. And I think with physicians that don't work directly for the hospital, it's creating that values-based influence model to share information with the clinical team so that we're all able to provide safe, high-quality care. So instead of directing a solution for hand hygiene, it's focusing more on what are the evidence, what's the evidence underlying the necessity for hand hygiene, what happens if we don't comply, communicating that to the frontline team member and then asking a question how we can help them achieve that journey. We do have physicians that work for the hospital, they're called hospitalists, but the vast majority of our physician team actually are independent business professionals that are working at South Lake. Yeah, and I think that's interesting because it comes back to the values again. And, you know, I mean, any organization that does not have really a clearly defined vision, mission, and values, I think is really losing their way, frankly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you're able to use those values both in hiring and in terms of your ongoing methodologies of how you do things. So if we talk about some of your values a little bit more, um, you know, giving a damn, I mean, that really influences people's approach. And if I see someone on my team who doesn't give a damn, then now I have something else to talk to them about. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other values from the organization? Just remind the viewers, but also, you know, how do you see those values playing out in the organization in terms of the behaviors? Yeah. So another one that we have, one of our core values, is honoring our commitments. Right. So if we make a commitment, again, using hand hygiene as an example, we talk about knowing doing gaps. In other words, do we know what we need to do? And the answer is yes. We've got lots of scientific evidence about hand hygiene. Are we doing what we know we need to do? And if we are doing it, we should achieve 100% compliance. If we're not doing it, we can ask the question, why? And instead of looking at punitive measures and things, simply going in and asking frontline team members, what can we do to help them achieve a target of 100%? So in the hand hygiene area, uh, if you looked at our scores institutionally, when I started as CEO at South Lake, we were in the high 50s, low 60 percent institutional compliance range. That sounds shocking, right? But in fact, that's very characteristic for yeah. many hospitals in, in North America. Now we're over 90 percent compliant, and we achieved this. We actually got to 96 percent in the fall, so we achieved this over a course of months. And how did we do this? Did we go out and 
point out to people, you must wash your hands? No. We went out and actually talked about the safety, the quality underlying the evidence. We talked to frontline team members about how important it is and asked them, what can we do to help you achieve that goal? From them, we got great ideas on things that we could do to help with the overall achievement of that goal. And they went out and they honored their commitment, the commitment to doing hand hygiene. So I think, to me, it all comes back to those core values. And yeah. working with physicians, we talk a lot about what are the incentives in the system that we put in place. And it's not about financial rewards and things. In fact, we talk a lot about um, uh, Dan Pink's model drive where he talks about autonomy, mastery, and purpose. What greater sense of purpose than to work in healthcare? Yep. Mastery, it's all inherently complex. We want to give our team members the tools they need to help them overcome the complexity of healthcare, and we want to give them the autonomy that they need to be able to go ahead and deliver. So we're, we're really focusing on basically embracing frontline team members and supporting them in their desire. And I think it pays off, and you see it in the staff satisfaction surveys, the physician satisfaction surveys. Yep. Well, and, and you're talking about sort of some of the key drivers to employee engagement. I mean, the reality is is that if I find myself aligned with the values then, and then I start to find myself with my personal goals and the organizational goals being alignment, and that really comes into the, you know, sort of shows up in the difference between purpose versus task. Yeah. And for me, that's a huge one is the, you know, I know what I do on a daily basis. It's I do this, 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 and this. But when I take it to a higher level and really understand why I do what I do and, and, and the importance of my contribution, and I think that anyone in an organization, if they can't sort of tie what they do on a daily basis and be able to see a direct link to what the overall vision and mission of the organization is, then they're not going to be focused. And I mm -hmm. think that... I mean, one of the advantages that the healthcare business does have is that they are able to make that connection much, much more clearly in the importance. And I mean, hand washing is a perfect example. I'd like to talk just a little bit more about because hand washing, we've read, mm -hmm. is, is an issue. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you talked about it. it's one of the leading causes of, of, of infection within hospitals. And to have achieved the levels that you've achieved is truly outstanding within yeah. North America. But I think there's probably some lessons there that we could apply to any business in terms of how did you get people engaged enough so that their, their goals were aligned with the organizational goals enough. So share with me a little bit about some of the specific steps because there are people out there hopefully watching that are saying, okay, well, hand wash is not a problem in my, my shop, but... Right. I sure want to get my people in line with something. So yeah. what are some of the tools and techniques they could use? Yeah, so whatever it is you want to align people with, it's important to make that visible in the organization. And one way to make it visible is for the senior team members to understand the data. So interestingly, you can go to different institutions and don't, don't even pick a healthcare institution, but start picking on the metrics and ask senior team leaders, what what is your hand hygiene rate or what is your score in this area? What's your last metric? And you'd be surprised the number of people who can't quote the data. They don't even know the data. They're not measuring the, it. Right. right. So if you're not measuring it and, you know, you can't quote the numbers, then it sort of gives a subliminal message that it's really not all that important. So one of the things we do in the space program is every senior team meeting starts with safety and quality. What we do at South Lake now, every senior team meeting starts with safety and quality. All our senior team meeting, uh, senior team members know the numbers. And when we go out and we do our weekly safety and quality rounds and we're on the ward, we talk about our institutional number, our hand hygiene number for the institution, and the number on that ward. And we say, you know what, South Lake is at 90%, but you guys are at 98%. Congratulations, awesome. that's great. Yeah, You're absolutely. doing an incredible job. And we actually ask the question, what can we learn from you and your experience to take to other parts of the organization? We call that finding the positive deviant solution and bringing it to different parts. But I think it's all about being able to communicate again with the team. And we do a lot of hand hygiene audits, basically, again, demonstrating to the team that we consider this to be very important. And our team is incredible incredibly responsive. If the senior management team identifies something as an important area, the South Lake team, the broader team, embraces it and responds. And that's why you saw us improve our hand hygiene score by 36%. Yeah, which is a phenomenal change in a behavior. Months, yeah. But I mean, so we've got leadership that's, that's fully engaged themselves. Mm -hmm. We've got clarity around the numbers. We've got the fact that we are not sort of demanding what we're doing is we're looking for legitimate input from the folks that are involved in delivering that output 
I mean, those are three critical aspects that will help any organization have the ability to create change in their organization. And I think the, the fourth one I'd add to that is, is, is that alignment with your purpose and mm -hmm. understanding why you're doing it, and that's the educational component part of it. Mm -hmm. um, you talked very briefly about recognition, and we don't have a, a, a lot of time before the next break, but let's just sort of start into that and then we can come back to it. But um, when people have done something well, you made a point of saying this is a positive deviation. How do you use recognition within the organization to drive behavior change? You know, I think the most important thing with recognition is that it be timely and uh, it truly recognizes the individual and the team members. So we have what we refer to as shockingly excellent awards. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are forms that get filled out there throughout the hospital. Anyone in the hospital can fill out the form on anyone else. It could be a patient or a family member filling it out on a team member, another team member recommending another team member and things. But these are remarkable. So I'm going to interrupt here because I want to give you full opportunity to speak on that, but I'm going to take a quick break now and then we'll come back and talk about Perfect. it. Perfect. All right, great.